a question. Since before your sun burned hot in space and before your race was born, I have awaited a question. Greetings and felicitations once again, fellow modelers. Here we are, Electronics 101, part two. In this video, we're gonna build a circuit step by step, solder it together, and demonstrate it. Proof of concept, proof of circuit. Let's get to it. Okay, here's everything that comes with this kit. Now, you've got some simple directions about the components included, and you've got a schematic. The schematic is directly related to the board. Now, you find your resistor values here, and your capacitor values and transistor values here, and you plug them in to the appropriate place right here. Pick and place, easy peasy, domin easy, anybody can do it. Trust me, anybody can do this. You just find resistor one, find out what its value is here. Use your little handy dandy uh, resistor color code finder at rate that you can get at Radio Shack for a buck or two. Put the resistor in, move on to the next thing. Resistors, capacitors, transistors, etc. This is really simple. You push it through this end, comes out this end, you slightly bend the tangs, and then you solder. We'll cover that later. Anyway, I'm going to place all these parts. Now, I'm going to use orange LEDs, so I'm not going to use the red LEDs. There's a battery, a 9-volt battery container that comes with this. I'm going to use a 9-volt power supply, so it's going to be permanent. I'll show you how to do that when I get to that point. So you can save this for another project. Now here are a couple of notes. You've only got one electrolytic capacitor. That is an electrolytic capacitor. That is a variable resistance or resistor. These are disk capacitors. They do not have a specific polarity. This is a mic. This takes your input voice signal, runs it through the signal for your output lighting. Okay. Now, I'm not going to use these machine screws, so I don't need those either. This is a 10K ohm resistor. Okay, if you look at the schematic, right here, the first resistor, R1, is a 10K. So you've got 1, 0, plus 3, which is kilo, or 1,000, is 10K. That's how you use your resistor color code finder. So you need a resistor with a brown, black, orange. Okay? Okay, I've placed the first resistor in place. R1, 10K, 10K ohms. Omega symbol for the symbol for ohms. Now, resistors in this instance do not have a polarity. Okay? But some people that are anal retentive like to make sure that all their resistors point the right way or the same way. So just for clarity, I'm going to make sure that all the resistors are pointed the same way. Okay? Now, these transistors are five forty sevens except for one which is a 557. These are MOSFET transistors. I will get to that a little bit later. Transistor, capacitor, electrolytic capacitor, LED, your variable resistor or trimmer, microphone, and this is directions on the case. I'm not using the case for the battery so we're not going to worry about that. Okay, they've pretty much thought of everything here. If you look at this resistor, the next resistor up from the bottom is 330K. 
orange, orange, yellow. See there? So, I mean, this is pick and place, pick and place, pick and place. Now, I'm going to stop at this point, and I'm going to continue building the circuit. So you've got a real good grasp by now that this is just pick apart, put it in, push it through. No big deal. Then you get to solder. Okay, so far we've got five resistors in plus the potentiometer. This is the potentiometer. This has three little tangs, this black thing has three little tangs that go through the back. They're very short little tangs. And, that, and there's a little shaft that needs to go in there. So make sure that you get that shaft in there. Do like I did. Lay everything out on a monochromatic, single color platform so that you can see the colors and it's easier to pick up and identify the parts. At least try it. Okay, R7 is 47 ohms. I'm sure Joe Manowski would love that value. Now you wonder why I'm stopping to do this because I want to let you know that on your little resistor color code you come up with yellow, purple, and black. The black shows a point zero, so you've got a total value of 47. Okay? Not 4700, not 47K, 47. So make sure you keep an eye out for stuff like that. Okay, there are more resistors than there are anything else. So all I've got left is one electrolytic capacitor, a couple of disk capacitors, and some transistors. See how easy this is? Just a matter of pick and place, pick the part, put it in the right place, and then solder it. We'll get to that when I get to the point of soldering. Okay, here's your electrolytic capacitor. See that big negative sign going down the case? Guess what? That goes in the negative side of the schematic already drawn on the board. See there? Okay. Now we've installed the electrolytic capacitor in the right polarity. It's got a spot laying right there to show you, and it shows you in the directions to lay the capacitor down. So this should be easy peasy, just follow the directions. Now at this point, I would have already started uh, soldering all the resistors. But I want to make sure that people see it coming together one piece at a time. This is a good time to lay some low tack tape over all the parts on the top. And then flip everything over and start soldering one joint at a time and as you solder the joints as soon as they're cool cut off the ends I'll show you that later there we go it's all built the circuit is complete except for the orange LEDs everything's in there where it needs to be all we gotta do is flip it over solder it and then run the wires for the orange LEDs. Easy peasy. See how it goes? All right. Well, we're going to move on to the soldering portion of this. Keep on trekking. Now, as you see here, I've got an old Jupiter 2 kit. And uh, I've got some hobby boards. You see, two of each came with the kit. Various different sizes. Now, I had a friend of mine who I'm doing a build-up for ask me about electronics for the engine. So, while I'm working on all of the rest of everything else, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make your own engine. 
not just for this, for the Jupiter 2, but for the space pod as well. Here you've got a space pod circuit. You can see the board sitting there, the little engine. All you got to do is modify the circuit that I showed earlier, and I will be showing that. So you see $150 for these little kits is absolutely unconscionable. Unbelievable. Here we have the 124 scale Mobius models chariot from lost in space i can't do a real good kit review on it because it's been discontinued thank goodness i've got one now they're going to be coming out with a 132nd scale don't know why but they are anyway since i'm going to be lighting all these lost in space models i'm going to be lighting this as well let's get to some soldering but before that, a couple of other things. Okay, here we have my original, probably 20, 30 year old soldering stand and soldering iron. The first thing you need to know to do is to tin your soldering iron. The best way to do that is to let it get fully up to temperature, then touch it with some solder, and then hit it with some steel wool. So you get a nice shiny tin on the end of the iron. Okay. Now, I've got another circuit here that I'm going to use as an example. Uh, it's yet another Velman circuit. This consists of yet another logic gate, as in the previous circuit, and another 4017. You see a trend here? Now he prefers to use logic gates for some reason, but that's fine. I usually use 555 timers in conjunction with a 4017. The 4017 is a very common circuit, as is the 555 timer or 556 dual timer. Now, these are sockets for these ICs. It's usually best, especially if you're a novice, new at soldering, to solder the sockets and not the ICs because you can overheat the ICs and break them down while you're soldering them if you use too much heat for too long of a period of time. So you solder your sockets in then you very carefully plug in your ICs in the proper polarity according to the pinout and you should have no problem. As you can see on this board, as on the other board, the LEDs and the LED placement schematic on the board have a flat spot. If you match up the flat spot on the LED with the schematic on the board, you can't go wrong because that's the proper polarity. Now when soldering, the best bet is to push your part through, bend your tangs out, and solder a few items at a time, and then snip the ends. The best way to solder is to have a fully hot, up to temperature soldering iron, and you come in on one side with the soldering iron, and come in on the other side with the solder and make sure that it flows smoothly and evenly then remove the solder and then the soldering iron. It's a one, two, three process. The only thing you can do to get good at it is to practice. The key to learning is through repetition. Just like my engineering instructor told me at college, the key to learning anything or doing anything properly is repetition. You cannot rebuild an engine one time and say you're a professional. 
you have to have a lot of years of experience doing the same thing over and over to the point to where you can extrapolate from given knowledge to come up with troubleshooting ideas and tr ways of repairing items. Now we're not even going to get into that but what we are going to get into is that repetition is the key to knowledge. So the only way you're going to get good at this is by doing it. You can watch all the videos you want but if you sit on the couch and you don't try anything you're never going to get proficient at it. Now we may get into this circuit another time but this is enough for the soldering portion of this video. Danger Will Robinson! Danger! 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 Danger Will Robinson! Danger! Danger! <laughs> it works! <laughs> A question! Since before your sun burned hot in space, I have awaited a question. See there, it works. Yet another application for this circuit. Now I can't wait to see who the first guy is to build a guardian diorama and rush out and use this circuit and say that it was his idea. <laughs> All right, well, you see the circuit works. You've got more than one example of that. So we've met our goal for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've got something out of it. Stay tuned. There's a lot more to come. Same man channel, same man time. <laughs>